During the Storm episode, we saw Ozai burn Zuko, but we never saw the interactions between the characters afterwards, like Azula talking to Zuko or Iroh making sure that Zuko is okay. The best we got was in Book 3. This was during the Western Air Temple episode. We got a flashback of Zuko and Iroh at the temple a week after he got burned. Thankfully though, there is a comic out there that explains the entire story. This comic has to do with the last Airbender movie. It's actually one of the few reasons why this movie being made was a good thing. This comic was written by some of the writers involved with the main TV series and the comics involving that. So the character designs with the rest of the characters are basically the same and the interactions are basically the same. It's just Iroh and Zuko are drawn like the 2010 movie. We start off with the story after Zuko got burned. He's rushing down the hall and we see Iroh chasing him, telling him that he is not well. And as Zuko continues to walk down the hall, every guard discusses what just took place and feels sorry for him. Zuko, as we can see, continuously replays this moment in his head while he's in his room and he's crying. Then Azula walks in and she wants to quote unquote help him pack. Also states that he'll be gone for a long time. Zuko gets very angry and responds saying that he'll be back sooner than you realize he's gonna capture the avatar and azula tells him yeah like 50 years or something and what's interesting about this specific scene is a big question was finally answered because many wondered how zuko got his crew and ship and it's mentioned that he'll have to ask a fisherman or something to get a ride we then see zuko walk out of the fire nation capital as everyone watches him zuko even tries to get a bunch of people to join him on this quest but nobody is willing to because they feel that they'll be banished like him Later on, we see that Zuko is kind of out of it. He's laying down and Azula secretly meets with him. He then asks his sister if she would be willing to ask Ozai for a ship since she is the favored sibling. Also, he doesn't have much to begin with and if he's going to find the avatar, he needs something. So she agrees with him, which at the moment as a viewer is kind of shocking, but also makes sense. We've seen moments of her being so cruel, but there's also been moments in the series where she's shown to care about Zuko. But the next day we hear that Ozai has agreed to this request and Zuko was able to get his ship but there's one condition and this condition was that Iroh could go with Zuko this could either be a movie thing or a TV series thing because I got the feeling in the series and I'm sure many of you did that Iroh kind of chose to go with Zuko he had power and only Ozai looked down on him after the siege of Ba Sing Se so I feel like this is more of a movie thing but that could vary depending on the person let me know what you guys think but anyways Iroh is with Zuko we got the first answer of how Zuko got his ship but the second question which is now going to be answered is how how did he get the crew? Because Iroh is actually the one that helped Zuko on that. For example, Lieutenant Lee from the Storm and Blue Spirit episodes actually fought alongside Iroh in the Siege of Ba Sing Se, and he put him in charge of gathering a crew. Later on, as the whole crew leaves through the gates of Azulon, Zuko had told the lieutenant to set a course for the Western Air Temple, and this is where we saw the exact scene in Book 3. But after this scene, Iroh suggests to Zuko that they go and check the Fire Temples, since the sages would know the most about the avatar. We meet Shayu, who obviously helped Team Avatar and he allowed Zuko to use his desk to research and learn as much history as possible. He found some of it helpful but he then got distracted by the great fire sage firebending. He later walked in and demanded to be taught this and was instantly rejected and it became an all-out battle for a moment but Iroh broke it up. Zuko walked away, takes his bandage off, Zuko in the mirror sees his scar for the very first time and he's in complete shock. Later on they leave and they're right nearby a local fire festival and somebody goes through their ship with a familiar mask and steals a bunch of Zuko's belongings. It's not Zuko wearing the mask obviously because this mask is a red spirit mask not a blue spirit mask. This individual steals all the items gives them to the citizens since the commander of this local area would not give the Fire Nation citizens anything. They wouldn't give them food, medicine, or resources. This kind of reminds me of the painted lady. Now Zuko goes to meet up with Iroh who's watching this play during the fire festival and he notices that one of the actors is the red spirit and then confronts him they begin to talk have a bit of back and forth the guy doesn't outright admit it at first eventually does and understands to an extent how zuko got his scar saying that people like him shouldn't have this scar and how this commander took something from him as well so after this conversation they team up and we learn that this guy's name is hong shen and he gives zuko the blue spirit mask this obviously is 
the mask from the last airbender movie once again similar to how iroh and zuko were redesigned and what's weird is the red spirit mask is more designed like the main animated series but this guy is apparently the reason that zuko got this blue spirit mask and the idea of not bending while being the blue spirit he got this from the red spirit as well because he was questioning why don't you fire bend and he says it's due to not being as easily caught the whole reason they went on this mission though was to save hong shen's son he was being held captive because he didn't want to be part of the fire nation army the commander forced his hand and this is a way to save his son it was explained that the child of his mother had passed away and he couldn't be in the war so he was kind of backed into a corner here but regardless of all this stuff being brought up zuko disagrees saying that it's important to serve your country and honestly this just shows how broken zuko was in the moment because during the war meeting you could see that he had a different thinking caring about the fire nation soldiers and obviously when joining team avatar he cared once again so this is obviously him having a bit more of the mindset ozai wanted him to have he even goes so far as to threaten hong shen and his son that he'll report them after the fact though this is weeks later we see zuko and iroh go to the eastern air temple and what's interesting is that they meet somebody you would not expect at all they met guru patik and zuko believes that this is the avatar which is funny because he's older and knew the air nomads he's obviously mistaken and iroh apologizes for their rude behavior now what's funny here is they bring up the whole avatar test and they bring this up a couple times during the story this is a movie only detail anyways continuing after the fact iroh comforts zuko and tells him that although his journey may seem dim he's on a path to self-discovery and it is not pointless in the slightest iroh then explains that he's gonna teach zuko the breath of fire and this means that his fire bending training will begin around this time later this night though we see guru patik returns and he explains that he believes that the avatar's destiny and zuko's destiny are intertwined and zuko pretty much ignores this but obviously you don't expect much from season one and earlier zuko but they go back to their ship and months go by and basically after this episode one begins honestly this is a great story i can't believe i'm saying this for a story related to the movie it's just mind-blowing one thing i do want to mention that happened a bit earlier in the story regarding the fire temples is the fact that Zuko is banished from entering Fire Nation territory. The fire temples are in the Fire Nation. So that is probably more of a movie thing where they kind of overlook that detail. It kind of doesn't make sense Iroh would be telling him to go there when in the show he literally says not to go there in episode 8 of season 1. That's just a minor detail and error maybe for the movie but I just thought I'd bring that up real quick. Hopefully we can see an animated version or a remastered comic of this one day with the correct drawings released. I know out there on YouTube, the Book for Air Restoration Project is doing this. They're doing a redrawn version with the correct Iroh and Zuko, but hopefully one day we get an official release of something. But what do you think of this story? Is this how you expected the beginning of Zuko's journey to go? Let me know down below. Let's discuss this.